Hey friends, happy Wednesday. Really excited that you're here. Welcome to the Beard of Talk podcast. We've got some really excited things going on in our Facebook group that I'm going to let you know about probably at the beginning of almost every episode for the next few weeks, but I promise you they're free. They're really exciting things that are going on that are going to help you in your business and in your life, and I think it's going to be really, really, really cool. So one of the things I wanted to talk about first is do you ever struggle with finding your why or like getting clarity on your purpose and how your brand can be bigger and more impactful than just pretty photos, right? You know, you go to workshops or conferences and you hear people talk about the why, the why, the why, and you honestly just want to reply with why, you know, because you're like, why is this such a big deal? I was there too. You know, honestly, I was just one of those guys that was like, I just want to run a business and I just want it to be cool photos and clients to like me until I got clarity on finding my why working with Robert J. Hill. Robert J. Hill helped me on finding a deeper mission for my business and aligning it with my brand and my personality going forward. Guys, the results speak for themselves. Like clients have noticed, vendors have noticed, I'm more happy and more fulfilled knowing what my purpose is. I never have to worry about what is my Instagram caption going to be. I never have to worry about, you know, losing, you know, potential clients. You know, is, is my brand too strong? Am I offending somebody? Like the clients that want to book us love us because we are clear on our why and our convictions and our growth honestly has exploded. I think we mentioned this in a past episode, but like April, right during a pandemic, our revenue was triple of last year, which is insane. So things have just exploded. It's really, really, really cool. And so Robert and I went live in the Beard of Talk Facebook community where he shared everything about how to get clarity, find your why, and then implement it into your business. It's free, available to watch in the group for a limited time, but you can watch it right now. Head over to TOGFB.com and get access to our talk and more sessions from industry leaders. All right, guys? How are you not going to do that? So it's really, really, really cool. So I want to talk about today's episode, Molly Stevens for the West and Wild, incredible photographer out of Colorado who's just got a heart of gold, knows her mission, and she's got a really, really wonderful style. It's curated, really, really cool. Talk a little bit about e-com in this episode, which I think is really fun. And so I think Molly is just the the person to go to for women-based badass businesses, honestly. Molly is incredible. So I would encourage you, listen to this one, enjoy it. And so without any further ado, here's Molly Stevens. Molly, I am super excited to have you on finally. I feel like it's been a a long time coming. Um, I have one question for you. Um, I have seen you. You've been such a good supporter of the podcast. I feel like for a long time, I would always see you in like the Instagram channels, DMs or like comments. You'd be really pumped. And uh, so one, I appreciate that. But like when this is this is literally just feeding my own ego. When did you find out about the Bearded Talk podcast? Was there like a certain guest and you're like, oh, I want to listen to them or like. When did you start listening? Because we started noticing you pop up a lot. Ooh, that is such a good question. Now I'm like trying to rack my brain. Well, first of all, hello also. Um, (laughs) I think it was probably a couple years ago, but I do remember very specifically, I think it was two years ago. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It was either Lindsay Roman Mm. or Evie. Okay. Um, But I was already listening. Like I was already subscribed, but I specifically have a memory of listening to that podcast at a reservoir in Wyoming (laughs) in the sun. Well, I don't even remember what my husband was doing. He was doing something like exploring with the dogs. And I remember listening to that podcast, but I was listening before then. Yeah. So I'm not positive, but I've been listening for a while. (laughs) That's awesome. I really appreciate it. It's, It's one of those things where like, you just like for your own business like instagram profile or whatever you and for the longest time we didn't have a website we didn't have a facebook page we didn't have a facebook group for the podcast we just had an instagram channel and uh you would always show up and be so encouraging and like share episodes and i was always like i don't know this molly lady but she is like so supportive and it meant a lot and um you know, come to find out, I kept kind of watching and just kind of like seeing what's up. I'm like, okay, like great photographer, incredible brand. I was like, I feel like we're probably gonna have Molly on the podcast someday. And now is that day. So um, yeah. really, really, really cool. So um, for the people who don't know who you are, like I tell us about yourself, kind of your story. Um, 
I know that you right now you're like in a move from like Colorado to Montana, if that's not too personal. Um, yeah, it's okay. Like you bought some land and trying to build a, you know, what I assume is like a forever empire, if you will. Um, so yeah, tell me, tell me about yourself and your photography journey. Yeah, of course. So I grew up in Northern California. I don't know if you know that or not. Um, I've mentioned it on my Instagram, but obviously now I'm based in Colorado, so I don't talk about it a ton. Um, I grew up there and then I moved out to Colorado for college and I went to University of Colorado Boulder. Didn't like it, transferred to Colorado State, <laughs> so go Rams. Um, and then from there, I was always planning to be a teacher. That was like my life goal because my mom was a teacher and I think I was most passionate about horses growing up mm. and I had done photography like super casually. I was actually pretty good in high school, like film photo photography and everything. And my dad's actually like a pretty good photographer as well. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of always just like a random fun thing. But senior year, I decided that I didn't want to be a teacher. So basically... I dropped out of the teaching program at CSU. So I still graduated with a degree, but didn't get my teaching license and didn't do student teaching. Um, so I was kind of like, what the heck am I going to do? I started getting my personal training certification because I loved the gym. And so I was like, oh, well, that seems fun. But I really didn't have like a good direction mm. of like long-term life. Yeah. Um, and I basically moved up to a guest ranch in Colorado in the mountains in Granby. And I had my little rebel T3i and just took pictures like the most beautiful landscapes. Like we would move the horses from pasture to pasture and you'd all this stuff and take pictures of my friends and their like the people that worked there and their horses. And, um, then I kind of realized I didn't take my personal training test because I just was like, I don't know. That just doesn't feel quite right either. You just hate certifications. That's what it comes down to. I know. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm not really someone not to finish things, but I just like if I know something's not right, then I just like basically just made the decision quickly not to follow through. Um, and so then I basically just had people asking me like, oh, well, when you move back, like, would you take my photo? And like, how much would you charge? And mm. I was like, oh, people will pay me for this. I didn't really realize that that could be a career because I think um, especially just kind of more traditional thinking, you don't think of photography as like an actual, I just, for me personally, didn't know it was like a paying career, yeah. especially since I didn't know I wanted to be a wedding photographer right off the bat. Um, so basically then I moved back from the mountains cause that was just like a summer job and, um, nannied and started my photography business and I went full time. Um, I guess it was a little bit less than a year. And my husband had one friend that he used to rodeo with who was like, Hey, will Molly do our wedding? And mm. I just told them, um, sorry, you might be able to hear my dogs in the background. That's all right. Dogs are welcome. Something must be walking by our window right now. Um, probably a rabbit. And um, so then, yeah, they just asked me if I would do their wedding and I just let them know, hey, I've never photographed a wedding, but if you're okay with that, um, yes. And I did a second shoot and assist before that wedding. But then, yeah, it's really just grown from there. Um, that was four years ago. So now we are living here still in Colorado. And um, as you mentioned, yes, we just bought land up in the Madison Valley in Montana, which is kind of near Bozeman and um, we'll hopefully be building on that while we're closing this month and then we'll hopefully be building on that in the spring. So end of 2021, we're hoping to be completely relocated to Montana. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, I had read somewhere that your dad was a photographer and that like you were, you had kind of gotten into it, but you weren't like super ham into it, but you knew that you like loved creative things. Is that right? Yeah, my dad, um, I think he still has a nicer camera than me. I think he has like the really, really high end Canon. Um, but he, that's partially for work, but he's always like, he worked in a like, um, dark room in college. Mm. He, um, that's what they're called, right? For film. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just second guess myself cause it's been forever since I've done film. Um, so he's done all that. He always really documented like our childhood really well. He's really good with like landscapes. And, um, I even did have him sort of help me second shoot a wedding one time, which that's is awesome. so funny. That's adorable. I love that. I love that. What is, uh, something in your work that is so funny. I feel like we just went through, uh, like a whole, almost like an unplanned week or month of guests on the podcast that were all from New York city. And so like all their work looks a certain way. And I was realizing this, looking at your work, I was like, 
I don't think we've had anybody that has like other than Ben Chaish maybe that is like and Robert Hill that have such an like an outdoor uh you know fun specialty like there's a photo you took of uh like a couple fly fishing and um mm-hmm. at least for me and my my job whenever a couple is like hey we want to do something a little bit different my ears always perk up I'm like oh yeah like okay what and uh at least in DC it'll be like we want to get you know engagement photos at the Washington Monument but like oh that's not different at all um yeah. but like it's just so cool. And I think you mentioned that it's like um, your brain is like for the West and the wild. So like, what does a, what does the Western lifestyle mean? And what is like for the West and wild? Like, why is that so important to you? Or is that just like mm-hmm. normal life for you? That's a good question. So um, as we were kind of talking before we jumped on this call, um, I grew up in a pretty small town in Northern California. So we were not that far from a city. So I definitely have that like cultured side as well. Mm. Um, but I grew up very much so outdoorsy. My parents are both extremely like adventurous. And I think that that is something that I don't talk about enough on my Instagram. Um, my mom used to be like a river rafting guide. My dad used to take kids on backpacking trips and he was a ski instructor at Squaw Valley in Lake Tahoe. Um, he like raced a little bit. Um, we like grew up literally like skiing or being on like their packs when they're cross country skiing. And, um, I got really into horses and my dad was kind of into horses. He did these, like, it's a horse race thing with the running. It's a whole long, it's (laughs) too complicated to explain, but he did all these things when he was younger. So, um, basically just from my parents being like super outdoorsy and like where I grew up, that was just very much so like your lifestyle, like always, hiking, mountain biking, like people were very outdoorsy. And then I got like totally horse obsessed. So I did all sorts of different like competitions growing up. And then in college, I showed horses as well um, at both schools doing slightly different things. Um, And then now I'm married to my husband who grew up ranching and rodeoing and all of that. So I really try to marry like that love for like the Western lifestyle, like taking care of Mm. animals, um, cultivating land, um, like really like working outside and all of that with like my love for like the adventurous lifestyle. So I just started fly fishing also and we go <laughs> backpacking and skiing and um, snowshoeing and my husband's a big bow hunter. Um, so we're kind of marrying those two things together and like creating one big brand out of that. That's awesome. I love it. It's so cool just to be like, it's not just like a one time photo shoot where you'll have like, a couple with some horses like it's a thing that you like often photograph all the time so it's just cool to see you know at least from uh people that live in the cities like a different um a different look and it's still you know like very successful which is cool or at least it seems very successful so yeah um, no it's awesome yeah that's awesome that's really cool um how did you kind of like grow your business from that first wedding um that you had with the like the rodeo friend like how did what were the steps after that like how did it kind of take off from there. Yeah. So my first few weddings were people that I knew or mutually know. And that's something that I always tell people like that are young photographers starting out, like network with the people, you know, because if you're young, you know, quote unquote, between, you know, 18 to 35 or whatever, yeah. you're going to have friends or acquaintances that are getting married. So it's going to be easy for you to kind of get started into it because if you just network and get to know the people around you, likely mm. you'll find someone that's getting married. Um, so yeah, after that first one, I think my second couple was one that I had worked with at the guest ranch in the mountains. Awesome. Um, and from there, they were kind of mutual acquaintances until I had ha- um, like had a bigger portfolio built up. And I really utilized social media and then just networking between friends and like word of mouth referrals. So social media, like that was definitely what I can attribute the most growth to. Um, I'm only just now getting into Pinterest and all that because Instagram specifically has been super helpful for me. Mm. Um, so yeah, I just posted consistently, continued to get better. I think I grew really fast in my skill set in the beginning, just by investing in different equipment. And, um, I honestly wish I had gone to like workshops, but I just taught every- myself everything from YouTube and trial and error. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening, definitely invest. If you find a workshop that you really, really trust, I totally recommend that. Um, I am just like a little bit more self-taught, but I probably could have saved myself some time if I had (laughs) gone to the pros right off the bat. Um, But yeah, I really utilize social media and then just word of mouth, like referrals from friends of friends and college and all of that. 
that's awesome. It's one of those things where I know for me, I learned from like YouTube and uh, podcasts back in the day, like Apple had video podcasts before like YouTube channels were a big thing. And so I'd literally like be watching like gear tutorials on my iPod classic um, back in the day, the, the big thick boys, if you will, and uh, oh <laughs> with the click wheels. So that was really, really fun. That's cool. It's, um, you know, that's the thing people don't realize too, is like having your friends like at least for me, my journey, and I feel like a lot of other people's journeys is like this, where like you book your friends as much as possible and friends of friends until you can't book your friends anymore. You know, like it's like a weird process to where like eventually once you hit the professional level, at least I've seen that like a lot of your friends, you're kind of out of their price range or or just not even price range, but just like their value proposition. Like they don't value photography as much as uh, your current clients, which is really funny. But like I want to know... Yeah, especially with only four years or so, that's incredible. Like, what was some of your favorite things to do just on social media or on Instagram that like really helped make it happen? Like, what were if you had to recreate it? Like, what would you tell people? Yeah, I think just first and foremost, really figuring out that good like specific brand identity. Um, when I started out like four years ago, I would say I was a, even a little bit more like western specific than i am now i think now i've embraced more of like the adventurous side of myself and my personality um but definitely figuring out that like very specific brand identity so that people know exactly they have like already an idea of who you are when they hear your name because of social media or because other people have like recommended you because you're amazing at city weddings and you kill like the architecture side of things or because you're incredible with like light in the mountains and you know how to work with, you know, tricky, harsh light or whatever it is. Um, and then just being super consistent with Instagram. Um, I definitely recommend posting like every day, especially while you're trying to grow. Um, now that I'm at a point where I'm not necessarily in that growth stage anymore, I'm more into like the converting stage of converting people that are following me into clients. It's a little bit different, but I was just super consistent. I was on my Instagram stories all the time, like just showing people daily parts of our lives, Mm. um, taking them behind the scenes, um, really just like highlighting my couple's stories and sharing about them and just making sure that my brand was congruent with who I am and like my own lifestyle. I think that was so helpful because then the people that followed me, they loved, Oh, you know, these couples pictures on horses, but then, Oh, they'd also see me riding my horse or us taking our horses camping in the mountains or talking about our dogs. Or, um, when my husband was rodeoing, like we're at this rodeo or whatever. (laughs) So I think just really figuring out who you are and that thing about you that is unique and special and translating that into everything you do on social media. That's like huge and just posting consistently. So like, don't overthink it, just like post consistently and then the growth will come for sure. How did you, uh, how did you decide that that was like the direction for you to go, uh, with a background in like teaching and personal fitness? Like, did you learn branding from somebody or marketing from somebody or did you see like a few things were working and you're like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing this. Like, how did you know to do that? You know? I think honestly, some of it is a little bit innate. I think that this is just like the thing that I'm pretty good at in life, but also I did listen to podcasts like Jenna Kutcher, Mm. um, kind of all those, you know, general like business entrepreneur podcasts in the beginning. Yeah. Um, cause that's all that I knew existed. Um, so yeah. And then I think just innately, I saw what would work. And even to this day, I know when like a post or something is going to do really, really well, because I just have a good feel for what my audience likes and enjoys. Um, so yeah, it kind of started out like naturally, like I think it just came to me easily, but over time I've recognized what those specific things are and how to, um, like use those to my advantage and like how to make content or like post content that my, uh, like not client base, my audience, my Instagram audience will enjoy. So I think at first it did just kind of come a little bit naturally, but over time I've like refined that more. Mm, Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I feel like it's uh, one of those things too, where I'm just like, how did she know? Like she just, she magically made it happen. Um, I want to know. Yeah. How long did you, uh, how long were you married to your husband? Um, We got married in 2017. So 
I think this October will be three years. Yeah, I was trying to do the math in my head. Yeah, we've been married since 2017. So I started wedding photography the year before we got married. So that was kind of cool. I was still in the beginning stages yeah. um, when we got married and everything. But yeah, he came to that first wedding with me and been super helpful since then. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. How has uh how has it been for you? Like, one, I want to know is your work pretty local or because it, you're not in a quote unquote like city like how far do you go out on a normal shoot or something like that or do you have to kind of plan for a little bit longer for you know sessions and weddings whereas like you may be in a city for me like at a wedding I might have a wedding venue that's like 20 minutes away from me and be like okay go shoot there wow. in like six weeks and then six hours later come home uh or even like I have a session tonight and you know like it's only you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes away. And uh, so for you, what is that like to be that further out? And like, how does that time add up for you? That is probably the hardest part. And any other photographers that live more rurally can totally relate to this. Um, I would say it depends. Like if people want to shoot at like a private property or something like that, it, it, there's a possibility it could be within like 30 minutes of me. I have had like one wedding that was 15 minutes away from my house at her grandpa's ranch. And that was like the most amazing thing I've ever experienced because most wedding venues are like an hour, an hour and a half at least. Mm. Um, but I also do about like, I don't know, maybe 40% out of state. So that's quite a lot of driving. Um, yeah. So definitely that is part of why I have to limit, you know, my weddings to a certain number per year, because there is just a lot more time and energy put into it, but it's definitely worth it also to get to those amazing locations. And, um, just like Colorado is pretty spread out. So you could have a venue like up North or down South or whatever, but it, it's worth it. And I'm kind of used to it at this point, but it is definitely a struggle. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine you're just like, Oh, how many weddings a year is that for you? Um, I, I always say, oh, I'm going to keep it at 25, but then it ends up a little closer to 30. I, I don't know hundred percent. I need to go back and, um, look because some things have obviously moved around from this year, but I think this year is at like 27. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good number though. I feel like that's, uh, anywhere between 25 and 30. It's like not too crazy. I feel like for most people and mm -hmm. at the same time, like enough to make some solid money and like support yourself yeah. if need be. And then yes. obviously if you have a spouse, like that helps of course too. So, um, that's really cool. I always, uh, for me, it was like a big jump. I, I had my first year where I hit like 19 and I was like, Oh wow, 19 weddings. Great. And then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, next year I want to shoot 25. Like I'll do whatever. Like I took, I did discounts. I was like, I have to get to 25. Um, and then I booked 37 in a year and I was like, Ugh. Oh, I was like, I don't want to do this that much anymore. Like I did um, in August. It was really weird. Like two years ago, I did six weddings in 10 days. Yeah, it was, oh. <laughs> it was insane. But like, you know what? I was like 28 years old, 29 years old. And then to um, like my wife and I just got married. So I'm like, okay, yeah. Like trying to figure out finances. Like it's easy to make money or at least easier than to figure it out how to save. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then, um, you know, it was, uh, it's hard to say no, right? Like at least as a, you know, you get a triple and you're like, man, I'm going to be dead, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's good financially. And at least for me, um, as long as they're not like too far away, it's not too bad. Like, um, I think three of those were at the same venue, which is hilarious, but, um, mm. like by the third day, I feel really warmed up and like, okay, yeah, like I'm in the groove. Whereas like, I feel like because of COVID, uh, like I just started shooting sessions again after like three months and I was like, how does my camera even work? Like, what do I do? <laughs> I was very out of practice. Totally. Yeah. I think, yeah, for me, definitely that like 25, I always say, Oh, I'm, I'm going to try to do less next year. But like you said, like when I get an inquiry and I'm excited about it and I mm. feel like I'm going to connect with the couple in the moment, I'm just like, it's fine. I don't even care. And then, you know, later <laughs> on you're like, wow, okay, that's a lot. But I mean, I think too, for us, like our schedule is very like, 
um, seasonal to a degree. So I think it's kind of that idea of like, I can do anything for a short period of time. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, now since things postponed, I think I have like six or seven weddings in August, which I usually try not to do that many in one month. Mm. Um, but I'm just like, you know what? I can do it. Like I can do anything in the, for a short amount of time and it'll be okay. And I'll get through it. And I think that makes it a little easier when you have that mindset of like, okay, this is just one or two months. I can get through it. It's going to be okay. And I know I'm going to like miss it in the winter. So I just got to push through and like, you know, get it done. Right. Exactly. You're like, I, I plan on having this crazy thing. Like at least for me, and uh, we have uh, two other photographers on the team. I've kind of talked to them and I was like, guys, like next year is going to be insane. Like 2021 with all of our reschedules, like most likely as a team, we're going to do like 65, 70 weddings in a year. Um, wow. And I was like, but that's so that all of us can like stay afloat and, you know, like mm -hmm. make it happen because every, at least for us, like every reschedule we've done, um, we haven't charged our couples for it. It's kind of like a good faith. Mm -hmm. Like we really want them to be passionate about us and uh, know that we're with them. But every date we give up for free is a date that we could be making money. So it's like we have to book double to, you know, stay the same right like next year will not be a growth year uh in yeah. theory but at the same time it's okay it's like all right like that's our job is to shoot weddings and to make it awesome and we didn't have a we didn't have a COVID-19 in our business plan and couples didn't have it in their <laughs> wedding plan and uh like who knows and you know if we were in New Zealand we'd be done with this and we, we would just go back to shooting weddings but it's okay yeah. um <laughs> I was like dang it um, I know <laughs> what is um you know I want to talk about I mean, your work is just so consistent, which I love. I think it's really, really cool. Um, I'm addicted to people who are who have consistent looking feeds and portfolios. I'm like, oh, this is just like the colors are very on point. Like they match, which I'm just like, how do people do this? Um, for you, like, what is that? What are you thinking when you're shooting to help you kind of get that consistent style? And then when you're editing and curating and posting, like, how do you, what does Molly look for inherently in her images that says mm. like okay yeah i'm gonna share this or this matches up or this is like you know close enough yeah that's a great question especially because i do feel like i shoot in a lot of different landscapes because mm -hmm. where we live kind of on the high plains of colorado is going to look very different than when i'm in rocky mountain national park which is yeah. only like you know an hour and a half away versus when even the mountains in montana look different than arizona look different than texas and california so i travel quite a bit so that can be a challenge especially with those pesky greens um, that everybody <laughs> struggles with um but i think i well a few things i think the first thing is that when i'm shooting i do look for similar light so if i i've kind of got it down to a science of like what i personally like so mm -hmm. i love you know sun coming through the trees when like a kind of open shade that's really easy for me to keep consistent when editing um or you know the golden glow at sunset um so i'm less likely to do things that might not usually fit like what um, I consistently like edit for. Mm. Um, so I'm definitely always looking for obviously like everybody else golden light, but I'm definitely not like limited to that. I think I've figured out how to edit in a way that can keep those core values of like, okay, I want things to be true to life. Like I want them to be colorful, but also have that like slightly warm and unique like edge to them. Yeah. So while I'm editing too, and I can share this cause I've shared it on my Instagram, but I loosely base them off of the Annie Graham presets. I do tweak mm. quite a bit just cause they're not quite like natural enough for me. Um, and I do love greens and like lively colors. So I try to kind of <laughs> tweak them a little bit to fit my editing style. But um, I always am flipping back and forth between the edited photo and the original to make sure that I'm maintaining those true colors while adding my own kind of like signature spin onto those. Mm. And sometimes I'll even go back and like look through past galleries and be like, okay, am I like matching these? Are these consistent? Are they getting like a consistent look? And obviously things do look different. And I think as time's gone on, I've allowed colors to look a little bit different like not been so concerned about that like yeah. if something's super like a uh, really blue day then or like that fly fishing photo that was an extremely blue photo because the water was blue and the sky was blue so letting that be blue while in other photos bringing out those warm warm tones but especially editing and when I'm actually shooting I'm always keeping those like core values of like okay I want this to obviously be the most like flattering yummy light possible mm. but i also want to maintain like the true colors that were there so flipping back and forth making sure that like 
the bride's bouquets are, you know, true to life as much as possible, um, making sure that I didn't completely desaturate the greens, all of that kind of stuff <laughs> while keeping my overall, like, because people do hire you, you know, in part for your editing style, yeah. um, keeping that overall, like, vision for how you edit and what they expect in mind, but also letting things still be like unique and true to themselves. Um, but I think, yeah, looking for that specific light that I know works well with my editing when I'm shooting is like the game changer because then you get home and everything is like easy to edit and you're like, Oh cool. My preset works on this and this is awesome. Right. Exactly. I feel like, uh, there's so much there. It's just really, really funny. I feel like, uh, photographers are known for like just killing plants all over the world. Uh, we're like, Oh, you thought this was a green forest? No, it's murdered. It's dead. Um, <laughs> but no, no, it's, uh, it's funny. I think too, at least for me when I was, when I was a younger man, I was like very particular about how things looked. And then, the reality that I've realized, at least for a lot of couples, especially for folks who have a really consistent style like yourself or like Lindsay or Jordan Voth, who we just had on, like it's a, it's about a feel for your client, right? Like that's the main mm -hmm. thing is that like, unless you have that one, probably like once a year, I'll get a, Hey, my bridesmaids dresses weren't that, that color. Uh, you know, it seems like there, it was a little bit different and I'm like, Oh, whoops you know like I, I went a little bit too crazy with it but outside of that like you know i feel like your your look has a consistent feel and that's like yeah. i feel like what most clients are going for is like oh yeah like i when i think of for the rest of wild i want it to be like warm and inviting and romantic and and like with a sense of adventure right you know like, yes like, the, the, wow the, uh, can, you, can you write my website copy? <laughs> that, was, like, that was that was perfect yeah. <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> i want to get your one of my mentees for some odd reason we just click really really well but i um like we literally were at lunch one day and uh pre-covid of course um sitting at the table and um she was just telling me i was like so what are you passionate about like what lights you up what fires you up what pisses you off like tell me and uh and I, I said something I totally forget, but I was like, oh, so your brand is X, Y, Z. And she was like, oh, I have to write that down. <laughs> That's like her brand forever. And I was like, oh, I'm not even I'm not even trying, but it is really funny. But that's I think, too, it's helpful um, to have like, you know, this is a whole other topic, but to have people look at your work and say, like, hey, what's your impression? Like if, if it's your first time looking mm -hmm. over everything and. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you liked everything I said. I'm always nervous that I'm going to like offend somebody. No, uh, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Now we just need to make this like a marketing call and be like, okay, yeah. what, what kind of copy can we come up with? Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you too. So obviously, photographer successful, kicking booty, have awesome work uh, and moving. Um, but I know that we uh, are both on the ecom journey as well, trying mm -hmm. to get into some products. So like. Uh, tell me about that. Like as much as you feel comfortable sharing, like what are you diving into? Why do you want to dive into it? Um, and what's the process been like for you? Yeah, no, that is a great question. And I'm actually super excited to talk about that. Um, so I started kind of thinking about wanting to do e-com. I think it was around Christmas when I was actually visiting. Oh, it was in earlier December. I was visiting my parents in California. Mm. And um, I honestly didn't even really know what e-com meant. I was sure. like, I don't really understand what drop shipping is or any of this lingo. Yeah. Um, but I've always like, I love photography. But I mean, realistically, someday if I am a mom or when we do move, I would love the flexibility of having other things going on. And little did I know then something like COVID would happen and you realize like, wow, I really do want to have multiple streams of income. Um, turns out luckily photography actually hasn't been as effective as I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, but still that like little bit of like that fear of like, oh my gosh, I might, you know, postpone everything. And what am I going to do? Mm. Having that e -com that we we're working on is so awesome. So um, me and my husband are kind of doing it together. Me and my husband, Shane. Um, but we had kind of started brainstorming like, okay, what are different things that like we like to do? And I had a bunch of different ideas, but ultimately we're doing a like outdoorsy clothing for women. And we do have like a bigger vision of like designing and manufacturing our own whole line. But if yeah. you've ever tried to do that, you'll realize that that's like a huge <laughs> huge undertaking and you honestly can't even get manufacturers to pay attention to you if you're just starting out. So yeah. we're essentially starting out with um, like sweatshirts and like t-shirts, cozy hoodies, ball caps, beanies, stickers, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm not positive when this will be airing, but we're launching um, on June 22nd. So yeah. 
our, we have all of our product. We ended up going with a local printer for that. Um, I found an awesome designer, like graphic designer, and then a, a local printer. So we've got all of our stuff here. We just turned my office, this is my office, my office um, closet into like storage Inventory. for that. So we have yeah. it all lined up and we've got our little packing station. Um, so yeah, we just did our first couple big shoots for it. And that's a amazing part about being a photographer is that you can take all the photos for your own brand. Yeah. Um, it just makes it so much easier to get started, but yeah, we should be launching, uh, this upcoming Monday. And from there, I just hope to keep launching unique things and getting different colors. Um, this is also kind of like my plan. I do have quite a few weddings booked in Montana slash I'll probably still be traveling back here in Wyoming and everything, but I really hope to grow this to a level of uh, actual supplemental income. So when we move up there, mm. I can not have to like travel as much and yeah. have this. I've been like loving it. So have it be like a bigger part of our income and everything. Dude, that's incredible. And it'll, you know, make the transition easier, just if anything, to have that extra income. Uh, oh, that's yeah. really, really cool. That's awesome. I feel like, yeah, it's a whole new world where I feel like some people always have like a product on their mind or they want to figure it out. But I think too, it's also like, you kind of have to just roll with it, you know, and like the, at least for me, the few products I have in my mind, like I'm going to start out with something like very simple and it could just suck. It could just be awful, you know, and like I might just have like a whole closet full of inventory that doesn't sell. Uh, but at the same time, like it's another, it's another business and like you got to just try it and have fun. And I, I think it's cool. Like it's something that I didn't know a lot of the steps to do, you know, on the, like everything before shipping, I didn't know a lot about like as far as like getting your own product and making it like high quality or the quality that you trust because like anybody can make a t-shirt like we can make a t-shirt on this podcast right now. Maybe we should um, and just be like Molly and Adam's podcast shirt, <laughs> but it's like, you know, how does that shirt feel like for me? The material is like very important and I'm just like I need it to not suck um you know and so i think that's really really cool yeah. that you're like going for it and and yeah again like having yeah. the marketing behind it will be sweet yeah and like it, again it wasn't something that i really knew that i was gonna love but i think um i am an extroverted introvert so i definitely have actually enjoyed having like more time just to like work on it by myself and have mm. like, okay, I have this vision and then we're going to go execute the shoot and I can organize and plan it because I'm kind of like more type A like that. So it's been yeah. really cool to have like me have a vision for something and get to carry that out and organize the behind the scenes and plan the social media. And I think part of what I loved with photography was building that business and building that mm. brand. And so getting to do it again for something else that I'm excited about and having fun with um, has been awesome. And like, I loved shooting the content. I love editing the content. Um, not so much love making the Shopify website, but I'm <laughs> getting there. I'm almost done with it, which I'm really happy about. Um, but yeah, it's just been like just something totally unexpected. But I mean, also one of our kind of like mission statements behind it would be eventually to, um, well, actually two part our, current mission statement is something that we will be doing right off the bat is donating like a portion of um, the profits to protecting public lands. So mm -hmm. we're going to be like encouraging people to use public lands. I know it depends kind of where you live, but there's public land all over and yeah. encouraging um, hiking, hunting, fishing, everything like that um, on public lands. And just like, I don't think a lot of Americans realize how accessible those are to us and that they are truly are public lands and we want to protect them. Yeah. Um, and then in the future, like I would love to employ other like small town moms or people that live in rural areas, maybe someone that lives out near us in Montana, that husband's a rancher and they can't, you know, drive all the way to Bozeman to work, but they want to get a job. Like, okay, cool. They can come yeah. help us with social media or just being able to employ people, I think would just be incredible to give people that opportunity and just run it really ethically and take care of our employees and our models and all of that. Mm, I think that'd be really, really cool. And for the yeah. record too, this will, by the time this comes out, you'll have already launched. So that's really, really cool. Yay. Do you have a, uh, do you have a URL just for fun that people can go yeah, check out? It's um, www.shopwildhaven.com and it will be live. Um, yeah. When this comes out, heck, we might even be on our second 
design launch. I don't know yet, but <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited. It'll be awesome. That's really, really cool. I love that. What else do you have uh, going on this year that you're excited about? Anything, you know, like photography wise or business wise, like outside of the e-com thing, I feel like COVID has really kind of pushed a lot of other things, but at the same time, like what, is there anything else that you're excited about or have coming up? Yeah. So um, actually starting pretty much this weekend slash July, my weddings are kind of back on. Mm. Um, So I've had a couple weddings this year, a few that really downsized to like that 10 person limit during um, quarantine and all of that. But yeah, my weddings are starting to pick back up. So I'm actually going to be really busy with that, which is exciting and overwhelming because it was like zero to a hundred. I feel like this year, like Mm. (laughs) nothing. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, cool. I have five shoots this week and two weddings. And and um, so I'm excited about that. Um, all the workshops and conferences that I was supposed to go to all got postponed. So with that, I don't have a ton. Um, yeah, just hopefully finding time to, you know, go visit my family in California and then really just focus on weddings and dreaming up house plans for our future house and growing our e that's, that's really, awesome. I guess I don't have a ton of super exciting things outside of work, but I love to that, work. That's so exciting. that's exciting yeah. to me. That's, that's This podcast is about like work and life. So those, all those things sound really exciting. Like moving yeah. to Montana, buying land, all that ish. And then yeah, like e-com, getting back into weddings. Like that's exciting to me. I think that's really, really cool. I think that's awesome. And I mean, I know yeah. a lot of people listen to this, like they, they're like ready to shoot, but maybe they only get, you know, 12 weddings a year or 20 weddings a year or not that mm-hmm. many shoots or whatever. And it's like, I know a lot of people who just aren't doing anything right now and um, it's tough and it's like trying to figure it out. So no, it's exciting. It's good. We, we all need to be working, (laughs) bringing home some bacon. Yeah, no, I'm super excited and just excited. Definitely have like a couple really cool elopements coming up this year. Mm. Um, I have one in Wyoming where we'll be like basically taking their horses up to the top of this mountain and doing stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely a lot to look forward to. And I think um, even just coming out of quarantine, like looking forward to spending more time with friends and family, we have started to see people on a smaller schedule or like amount now um, since our like ban has been lifted a little bit here in Colorado, but just still looking forward to celebrating friends, baby showers and all that kind of stuff. I think through COVID, you just start appreciating those small things more like getting to go back to the gym was like incredible or (laughs) getting to, yeah, do a, a small wedding is like the best thing ever. Yeah, no, totally. We, uh, my wife and I just bought bikes and, uh, it's kind of funny, like as an adult, like, okay, yeah, we're going to get back into biking, but it's like, we, what the gym is closed. Right. And it's, it's, you can work out at home, but it's so hard to like mentally, you know, for a lot of people to have the like drive to do it. But if somebody's like, oh, let's go for a bike ride and let's just go explore or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can get into that. So I was like, we need a healthy hobby. Like we need to just go for rides and have fun and, um, you do that thing. And it's it's, because even for like hiking, right? Like hiking, a lot of parks aren't open yet, or it's kind of mm-hmm. weird, or at least depending on where you stand, you're like, you don't want to be around people, but you're like, okay, like biking, we can just be on our own doing our thing. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's really cool. That's awesome. Uh, well, sweet. Where's the best place for people to go and kind of see, you know, your Instagram, your work, come say hi. Uh, and, uh, and then obviously like shop wild Haven, uh, we're going to be really excited when that launches as well. So yeah. Yeah, where's the best people to, where's the best place? Sorry, I'm stumbling to go no, find that's all your okay. stuff. Well, my photography Instagram is for the West and wild photo. Um, for the West and wild photography is my full business name, but obviously that doesn't fit in a little <laughs> bio name. So yeah. just for the West and wild photo, um, that's where I hang out the most often, but also now over on shop wild Haven, that will not be as much of me, which is actually pretty cool. Like I don't have to be the face <laughs> of everything. I've got some beautiful models some gorgeous like landscape photos if you're into like skiing um hunting fishing hiking camping backpacking hiking literally anything i think that you'll have fun over there and um resonate with what we're posting so yep uh either shop wild haven or for the western wild photo my photography website is for the western wild.com and yeah that's where we can hang out i'm also on tiktok if you want to hang out with me on there (laughs) which is molly t stevens um tatiana is my middle name so molly t stevens and that's kind of like the more just like low-key fun place so if you want to come hang out on there also 
I'm on there pretty often. I love it. I love it. One uh, one quick question. Is Stevens with a V or PH? Oh, good question. Um, with a V. Okay, so nice. S-T-E-V-E-N-S. That's a good question because my dad's name is Steven with the PH. So no, I'm Stevens with the with the V. That's amazing. That's amazing. Also, I think you're the first guest to uh, to uh, promote their TikTok. So I love that. We yes. should definitely all go say hi. <laughs> I need to be more on more active on it. If you are just starting out your brand and you want to grow fast, definitely utilize TikTok, especially if you're in that like 20s age group. Like yeah. that is where it's at. So get on there ASAP. I love it. I love it. Thanks so much for coming on, Molly. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you, Adam. Man, I could listen to Molly talk all day. She's just got this perspective that I think is like very pure and very um, honest in the way that she runs her business. And at the same time, she's not afraid to like pivot if she needs to, which I think is just really, really valuable, really, really cool. If you've liked this episode, go give us a five-star rating on the Apple podcast. That would mean the world to our show. It really helps people find the podcast. Or if you want to head over to the Facebook group, TOGFB.com, join our Facebook community. We've got a lot of photographers in there who are all just sharing the journey that we're all on, demystifying what it takes to build and run a sustainable photography business. So come hang out. We'd love to have you guys there. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.